Please welcome to the stage Edna Piranha. Okay, um, <laughs> I just discovered the, that it had a sparkle thing and I thought that was fun. Um, so I will tell you the story of how this started last May in 2013 and how it became what it is now, which none of it was planned. Um, a colleague and I, Sole, uh, decided to whip together a concept um, because I work on a lot of chat experiments. So. I always get all my friends to test out all my stupid chat things, and they're always really weird, and they have embedded media, and they do weird things, and they're not meant to make money, they're just silly ideas. And she was doing a lot of WebRTC stuff, so I was like, hey, do you think if I write a message and I hit enter, you could just get some frames of a person's face when they send that message, and then we can do an animated GIF? She's like, I don't see why not. So we whipped it together, she gave me her stuff, and then I integrated it in, into my app, and then, uh, and then that's how it was. It was just between a couple of people at Mozilla and some other friends just playing around with it. And then eventually, I, held, I didn't talk about it publicly to anyone until I uh, introduced it officially at Real Time Comp last year in October. And then the hacker community uh, got into it, and then someone posted it on Hacker News, and then in like Reddit, and then like the next, um, I think it was like October 11th and thir to 13th, um, there was over 3,000 people in one day <laughs> that visited the site, um, and it was just scrolling with all these faces and stuff, um, and uh, that's Sole and I. Um, <laughs> so, uh, that's, that's all it was, and um, it was just a single channel, and it was just a mess, and then um, there was jokes about how Silicon Valley shut down for two days, because they were just trapped into this system, and then everyone was talking about how they were addicted, and how could they get themselves off of this, and no one was sleeping, and it was just, it was surreal, but then we had to, like, I had to kind of deal with it, and I was like so excited because I had to like deal with the server and then all these people coming in and all these famous people. And then uh, it wasn't too bad. Surprisingly, um, we were expecting some genitalia to show up. <laughs> and I think I've only ever seen three penises on there. And I'm like, that's not bad. I guess they're getting soft. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, like, I think one didn't show up for three hours and we were like, that's yeah, I, I, you think it would show up the first 10 minutes, but, um, and then we kept it this way, and I just didn't want to build, like, an IRC clone. Like, I didn't want to build a thing with channels because I'm a proponent of less features so that you can focus on making the best out of what you have. But um, it also didn't have authentication because you just sign in and start typing. But um, your face would be on there, so that became the form of identification. Um, and then I had to sort of decide um, why I wouldn't put channels. And this is the problem. It's, you have people in pods, they don't know where to go, they don't know who to discover or talk to, so they kind of get trapped and bored, or they just get siloed. And then, how are you gonna handle that? So, I just didn't wanna deal with that. This was just a fun project. So, I forced everyone to be in a single room. And they had to deal with each other. And that room can't have millions of people at the same time. It, it probably has some sort of Dunbar number going on where it's like, well, oh, it, it can only ideally fit this many people a day and that's how it is. It can't scale. That, Human relationships don't scale. You don't have 5,000 best friends. You have, you know, like 10 that you keep in touch with. So to manage that, sometimes you get obnoxious people coming in and hiding 
their camera. So they have to have it on the post, but they would put tape over it or they would just face it somewhere else, like a ceiling, and say really rude things. So we said, well, let's mute them. So the idea is that the muting is on your client's side. So if you don't want to hear about that person, you mute them. They're still coming through, but you don't see it. But other people could see it if they want to. And it ca causes like weird relationship, but for some reason it really worked. And it was such a simple idea. And all the regulars ended up becoming really good friends on there. And then suddenly people were meeting up. And there was like a San Francisco meetup, Portland. There was a conference in Portland this uh, just past spring. It was like 40 people came and hung out with each other. Then there was one in New York, and Clay Shirky was part of that one too. And then there was, um, yes, so after the, the flood from TechCrunch and everything, around New Year's, uh, somehow this got in the hands of a French uh, teen or young 20-something online uh, women's magazine called Mademoiselle. And suddenly there was a flood of like thousands of French girls from college <laughs> who were just speaking French and just like taking over. And then uh, all the Americans were like, oh my god, it's the French invasion. <laughs> So we didn't know what to do, and they didn't know French, and it was just getting weird. And then I think at that point I knew, well, we don't want channels, but the French need a place to talk to each other <laughs> because the Americans are getting stressed out. <laughs> so I actually made a channel specifically for them that had nothing to do with this one. So it would be like fr.meetspaces, and then ours was just the international one. And then they all just use that for a bunch. And then we were using ours. And then sometimes people would just visit each other's. And then it was really strange. And then, but we all got along and they weren't coders. So this is really, <laughs> and then there's people who are like 14, there's people in their 40s and it doesn't even matter. And you're not talking about your, you know, what code you're doing or whatever. They just, they just talk about um, things that you, you shoot the shit with. Um, and that worked really well. And then um, there was a French meetup in Paris, I think, and in Lyon. And uh, it's just, it was just bizarre to me. Um, I was sitting here, like, watching this happen and, and sort of trying to navigate what a crazy surprise everything became. But uh, pretty soon, um, when all this stuff was sort of just happening, I stepped away from doing a lot of the coding stuff and had people help because it was open source uh, and started uh, paying attention to the communities and watching things so to make sure that people felt like they were in a safe space. So if things were happening, we would sort of encourage in sort of the, the culture of, of the community to be like, this is how we deal with things without embarrassing people. This is how we deal with really negative people. Um, this is, and we do everything sort of in this passive way so that they're kind of, if, if someone's being really annoying and trolly, then we just go, well, we ignore them and they usually go away unless they're absolutely insane. And that doesn't really happen. They go away because no one's paying attention to their antics because they've been muted. Um, and that was good enough for a while, but then uh, we had some times where people felt really uh, stressed out about some regular trolls that would come in and harass them and say insulting things. And they didn't want um, other people to have to see that if they muted. So it took a while. I, I, I debated it. So we have a temporary hell ban, which you need. Um, there's trusted people that are admins that can ban someone's fingerprint for one hour, and they won't even know. They'll still see their messages come through, but uh, no one else will see it for one hour. And why we say one hour, not forever? Because we always give people a chance. They might come back later and be part of the community, and you never know. Because um, sometimes people just act like that because they're scared, and they don't know what to do, so they just do the most obnoxious thing. I mean, I used to do that, so. Um, <laughs> and we, you know, it's, yeah, so. Uh, that's how it's been, and I think people were really fascinated by how basic the system was, but how effective it was, and 
how we created really, really close friendships between all these people who have busy lives and have different interests. And now we have things where there are artists, like painters, and then there's coders, and painters like, I wanna learn more about coding now because you guys code. So then they teach them how to code. And then they go, I wanna learn about watercolors. I can teach you how to watercolor. And it just happens naturally. Like, I don't have to be there to monitor that. But I, the, I guess the one of the questions is if this, was forked, so you can take the code and set it up, and you ran your own thing, would it have the exact same community or would it be different? I don't really know. Someone will have to tell me how that works and what kind of community they get out of it. Um, part of me feels uh, uh, in my gut that this community is sort of around the kind of people that I would like to be around, so I might be influencing that community. I don't know if like a, Republican conservative community of meat spacers on their other fork would actually work in a different way, but they probably, you know, we wouldn't, I don't know, like I, so I, it's so new and I think like this is becoming interesting to even therapists and, and people like this whole showing a face to communicate, not needing to do things like sign in with Twitter, or Facebook and go through this whole process. There's no tracking and Another really important thing with these um, messages is that they're ephemeral, so they disappear after 10 minutes. Um, so that it's almost, it's like a, almost like a real conversation. Um, there's no archive or anything. Uh, and anyone can listen in on the public socket, so they could listen to the messages and save them themselves or something. So when you say things on there, you have to be aware that anybody could be watching. Um, and, the, the way it works, because the, the pictures go one after the other on one side, we started making games. <laughs> so you could just, you could, people were, we were entertained with this accidental game that we made where um, you do half of your face and someone finishes the other half and then they like move their mouth and it looks really funny. And sometimes they did other stuff. Um, and it was just like creative ways of sort of doing that stuff, and sometimes they would continue the rest of the body, but they couldn't do the feet, so you would just do this at the bottom. Um, so that was fun. Uh, they also did um, things where they would take messages, uh, this is by Ryan, um, they would take messages that were from Meetspace, and then the, the GIF, and you would have to figure out which one he actually said. <laughs> so these are all just like, projects that they would do based on the, the information they could get. And, and they would make bookmarklets and little clever things and, and bots. So you could, you know, make a bot that brought in pictures and stuff. This is Jordan and he basically, I guess, uh, figured, like, I guess people chose, but he would, he would mark every location that a meat spacer was that, you know, wanted to give that information. So you can see how, uh, it's generally in the Western Europe and North America sort of <laughs> area. And the meetups actually have a page where they, that they're gonna have a one year anniversary in San Francisco. And, uh, and yeah, it's just crazy. Like I, I, it's so great that this is happening, that we have hope that there's really cool things you can do with the internet that make people feel good and wanna build things. And, they don't have to be awesome at anything uh, in particular because someone is there in the network to help them get there. Um, they just need to know how to ask questions. And um, a lot of the, because I'm a coder, uh, uh, a lot of the stuff I know how to do is just how to do open source and community and coding. So we do projects together. So there's a new one we're doing, which is called Revisit. And it's basically distributed, imagine Photoshop with a bunch of filters, but they're all distributed and each person did a different service. So you can do, you can run an image like that and then just run glitch art from beginning to end through distributed servers. And this actually is really simple, but it motivated and made a lot of people feel good. They were like, I wanna make this thing, how do I help? people would set up templates for them. They're like, now use one of my libraries and do this. And then they'd be like, 
now they have to learn about buffers and all this technical stuff, and it's not just some boring hello world thing. So motivating people to make code and hack together, this is like one way of doing it through our community. Um, and then everyone got, who got into this uh, ended up changing their Twitter avatar. So it's like all of us that we're all glitched up. And uh, it's, it's weird because we're all like, hey, you're doing that? I'm going to do that too. And then we're all kind of creatively doing that thing. And then we go do something else. And it's like it's just like a little game. And then sometimes we meet up. If, if you're in San Francisco, then you tell Meet Spacers on Twitter, hey, I'm going to be in town. And everyone will want to meet up with you and have a beer. And if you're thinking about when you move to a new city and you're really lonely, it's just like perfect opportunity to be in a safe community that's not going to be like trying to pick you up or anything. They just they just want to meet you because they trust, okay, you're a good person, you know, come with our community. And then, or you go, it gave people an excuse to travel. So they'd be like, I'm going to go to Paris now and meet the other meets and blah, blah, blah. Um, and there's a girl, Renee, that drew some of the meet spacers that she hung out with a lot in Toronto. And... Uh, that's, that's basically, that's the community. So I think um, what, what, what I learned, and I think, I don't know, what meat spacers might have learned is that this is, uh, things can grow from, from projects that you didn't expect from them to happen. Like sometimes, it, and it's usually an accident and it's timing and it's just the right mix of people. It's usually a lottery. Um, and once you get that group together, most of the effort is actually maintaining that community, but not being, not being a fascist. You have to just, you have to let people be who they are, but you also have to make sure that they're not hurting anyone. Um, and, but you're also wanting to motivate them to have more confidence. A lot of people need confidence about the things they can do. And also, not to always tie it into things like money at first, you know. It's just, just keep making things if you love making things and then have people in your community give quick feedback and then work together on it. It's not always on you to make this stuff. And I think whatever we did here, we, we document through our stories and everything, and, and I wish we can just sort of spread that out to other people. So you can make whatever. It doesn't have to be a social network. It can be anything. But having these, these pods of communities and sub-communities and, and letting them sort of do their thing and knowing that a community may eventually die, and that's OK, because they have other places to go, and, and allowing them to like be able to navigate that and find their ways is the most important thing we can do rather than make the next thing that has two billion users that makes them feel like crap. So you don't want to do that. And uh, I think uh, that's all I have to share. Uh, if you want to check it out, um, it's meetspec.es. <laughs> um, uh, and then it just spells meet spaces. And uh, if you're shy, it's, it's OK. You don't have to do anything, but if you ever feel comfortable or you had a few drinks, you can just allow the camera, use a modern browser, and uh, check it out. And there's an iOS app, and, and uh, I think it's called Meet Chat, and you could use that too. But warning, all this stuff drains your battery pretty quick, so just use it lightly. And I think that's it. Thank you.